Introduction to Blender 2.8 Workbench Engine In Blender 2.8, the Workbench Engine supplanted the OpenGL render option from 2.79. The Workbench Engine offers more settings than the OpenGL render option with one exception. With custom lighting setups available to use, and the ability to include textures, the Workbench Engine is a great way to quickly test character movements and timing. There are three main lighting options, with studio and matcap options having settings that you can change. With studio lighting, you can change the rotation of the universal light source, you can also set up the light to match the rotation of the camera, or the current view, that way the lighting of the mesh always appears to be evenly lit, no matter what direction you are looking at it from. This is great for 3D modeling as shadows will not get in your way. The matcap lighting option allows you to use matcaps, a way to make objects in the scene look like they are made out of a specific material, and reflect an environment and light source that does not exist. Using the matcap lighting option does remove the ability to use textures in the color options, though you can use the compositor to get around that limitation. The flat lighting option makes all objects uniform in color without any differences in shading. There are some interesting things that you can do with this in the compositor, however, I need to do more testing to see if any of it is useful in an animation. For the most part, there are six ways to color the scene, though there are very little differences between the material, object, and vertex options. The single color option allows you to choose the color that you want all objects to be. The random color option gives each object a random color, this helps you to easily and quickly see what is made out of multiple objects. In conjunction with the Material Node Editor, the Texture Color option allows objects to display UV map textures, although the images will not be affected by other nodes and must be the last selected image node in the Node Editor. The Workbench Engine also has a miscellaneous options like Backface Calling, this makes the backside of a face not visible. Another option is the X-ray slider, it will cause all objects to appear transparent, with lower numbers making them more transparent. The shadow slider generates a single directional light source to generate shadows in the scene. Though you cannot choose the color of the light, you can manipulate the direction that the light is coming from by clicking on the gear to the right of the slider. You can also change the shift of the shadow, however that seems to have a similar effect to changing the opacity of the shadow. While the shadow focus seems to brighten or darken the non-shaded areas. The cavity option allows you to artificially highlight ridges and shadow valleys. This can give an interesting effect to the render. The depth of field option enables the rendered image to be affected by the depth of field setting of the camera. The outline makes an outline around every object, and lastly the specular lighting enables specular lighting. The only film option is to have the background transparent or not, although the color management and simplify options appear to be the same between render engines. This was a long topic and if you are still here, I would like to thank you for watching the video, and happy animating. If you have any more questions about the Workbench Engine, 
please let me know down in the comment section below.